Are you suffering from chronic stress and anxiety? Have you been trying to deal with it naturally, but are still struggling? If so, then this is the video for you. We're going to be going over some of the most common medications that we use to treat anxiety so you can make a more informed decision with your doctor. Hi there, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that's helpful to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. Today, we're going to be going over some of the most common medications that we reach for when we're trying to help somebody with anxiety. Certainly, medication is not the only thing that you should rely on when treating anxiety, but it can be a good tool when nothing else that you've tried works and it's starting to control your life. If you're suffering from it, you're not alone. Anxiety is one of the most common health issues that we see in our clinics. It's estimated that approximately 20% of adults in the United States are dealing with or have dealt with some sort of an anxiety disorder. The good news though is that I want you leaving with after watching this video is that there is hope. There are other options that can help and can keep it from controlling your life. We always like to focus on non-medication techniques to help. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check out my video on natural ways that you can help you control your anxiety. I guess before we go into discussing the different medications, I find that it's helpful to understand a little bit about what anxiety really is. The best way that I've found to describe it centers around recognizing a normal reaction in our body that we call the fight or flight response. This is the mechanism that we have developed that when confronted with something dangerous, allows our body to ramp up and either fight it or run from it. For example, if you're walking through a forest and a bear charges out at you, what's gonna happen? Well, your heart rate elevates, your blood vessels constrict to allow more blood to the brain, adrenaline is released, helping you to either run or fight for your life. These are normal responses and they're good responses because when the bear is coming out at you, you need to react. Now, anxiety is a condition where this response is a little too active. It's where these normal responses to scary or dangerous situations are overactive or flare up for things that are not dangerous or scary. So instead of a bear charging in the forest, it's like walking through the trees and the fuzzy bunny were to hop in front of you. But instead of thinking how cute it is, your body reacts to it like it was a bear. That's what's happening with anxiety. Normal day-to-day -day life is triggering that fight or flight response in a way that starts to interfere with your ability to function. There are some medications that can help you control this response, especially when you've tried everything else. So let's get into those. When we look at treating anxiety, there are two general categories of treatment strategies that we try and use. There's an approach when we try and treat it as you get it, and an approach to try and treat it to prevent it. Within each of these categories, there are different types of medications that we can look at using, depending on your symptoms. Let's look first at the treat it as you get it kind of anxiety. This is typically when people have occasional panic attacks or have situational issues that seem to bring on anxiety. Most commonly, these are events like traveling, flying, being in closed spaces, being in crowds, or presenting things in front of people. This would also include your panic attacks and come on out of nowhere, and they don't necessarily have to have a reason. Most of these treatments tend to center around just calming the anxiety down or creating some sort of sedation to prevent these symptoms from taking you over. Probably the most common, or at least the most talked about medications used for this type of anxiety are in a class of medications called the benzodiazepines. Now, these are your Xanax, lorazepam, or Valium types of medications. These are sedating medications that can, have a very, or they can be very effective in treating anxiety that has come on all of a sudden. When you have a significant panic attack, they can be the most effective treatments. Now, I'm not going to go into a full discussion of these, but the most important thing to understand about this medication is that it isn't something that you should take very often. The biggest issue with these types of medications is that they can be very addictive. They aren't designed or intended to be taken on a daily basis. Now, unfortunately, many physicians have been prescribing it this way, and it can be very difficult to get off of it. I will use them in my practice, but we don't give very many of them to avoid the potential of addiction. What I tell people is that if you're having a severe panic attack and everything else isn't working, then they can be extremely effective. But if you find that you need to use them frequently, it's better to find something safer to prevent the symptoms from coming on in the first place. Another medication that we will use is one called propranolol. I give a better discussion of this medication in this video, 
But in short, it's a great medication to help for situational type anxiety, especially for social anxiety and getting up in front of crowds. It helps slow the heart rate down and prevent that significant anxiety response that can happen when you're put in those situations. Now it can be used as a daily medication for more mild anxiety and it doesn't have the same potential to become addictive. Now another effective medication that can help for more situational anxieties is one called hydroxyzine. This is what we call an antihistamine or in other words a more powerful version of Benadryl. It can be used as a daily medication but the biggest problem with it is that it makes you really sleepy. So most people don't do well with it on a regular basis. Now it can be quite helpful for those types of anxieties that affect you most at night and keep you from sleeping. So those are the main kinds of medications that are used when your anxiety doesn't happen every day. But what about when you're always anxious or you're having frequent panic attacks that you feel like you need to be taking something all the time? Well, when your anxiety gets to that point, it's better to reach for medications that can help prevent the symptoms from coming on in the first place. As we mentioned before, medications like propranolol or hydroxyzine can be used on a daily basis, but they may not be as effective for your more significant types of anxiety. When your anxiety is bad, the most common medication that we will use belong to the family medications referred to as antidepressants. Working with the different chemicals in the brain like serotonin and norepinephrine, we can help control that debilitating anxiety. There are two main classes of these medications that we will use. One we call SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, or SNRI, or meaning Selective Norepinephrine Reuptake Inhibitors. Out of the SSRIs, the most effective medications in controlling anxiety have been escitalopram, citalopram, paroxetine, and sertraline. Some of the others, like fluoxetine and fluvoxamine, are felt to be effective as well, but the studies aren't quite as robust on those. SNRIs, like venlafaxine and duloxetine, have also been shown to be effective as well. Both of these classes are meant to be taken daily to help prevent symptoms from coming on. It usually takes four to six weeks to see the full effect, so they're not meant to be taken on an occasional basis when you, you just have symptoms. Now another medication that's commonly used is called buspirone. This is in a class of medications all on its own, but it does have some similar effects on serotonin. It's used quite a bit to treat anxiety, and it's usually tolerated pretty well. It doesn't seem to be as effective as some of the typical antidepressants. However, it has been found to be useful when we add it, actually, to some of the SSRIs or SNRIs when more anxiety control is needed. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is a medication called gabapentin. This is actually an old anti-seizure medication, but it has been found to be effective in treating anxiety in some people. It probably isn't the first medication that most doctors will reach for, but it is typically tolerated pretty well, and it can be helpful when other things may not. I also have a video on this one specifically talking about it if you want to check it out here. As you can see, there are a lot of different medications that we can reach for if nothing else is working to treat your anxiety. Now we can't go into specifics about each one in the scope of this video, but hopefully going over what options are out there can help you in being a little more informed as you talk to your doctor about what may be right for you. Talk with them about how often you're really experiencing bothersome symptoms. If it's occasionally, then taking a periodic medication like your benzodiazepines may, may be appropriate. But if it's a fairly regular problem, it's really best you stay away from those kind of addictive medications and focus on ones that can prevent your symptoms from happening in the first place. Well, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you did, please take time to give this video a like and share it with your friends. It helps our channel to grow and reach other people that may need this in their life. And if you haven't done so yet, don't leave without subscribing and hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on our future content. But until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.